Let me get this straight. We protect our banks, politicians, and prisons with armed security, yet we protect our children with a metal sign that says gun-free zone. Let's talk about that. Alright, so this is my video response to Alaskan Ballistics talking about the sad conversation, but necessarily conversation, of keeping our schools safe. I'm going to try not to ramble, but I'm going to turn it into two sides. The side of stopping the threat and the side of preventing the threat. First off, with stopping the threat, uh, if it's already occurred. Arming the teachers, something like that, is a very good concept. He brought up the whole putting them through a training course and having them re-up, recertified, certified for their firearm. That's a great concept. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, is uh, the Yankee Marshal brought up a good point about putting, putting police stations right next to schools and stuff like that. And that's a great concept. But at the end of the day, even if something happens and they're going to be able to respond within minutes, um, fact of the matter is they're still outside the building you know the, the the people that are going to be closest to what the attackers are trying to go after are the teachers and people inside the building and I think that you know if you can put them through whatever training course you know is deemed appropriate I'm sure we can come up with something good then I think that there's no reason why they shouldn't be armed. And people, I know some teachers want to be armed, some don't. Well, if there's 50 teachers in the school and 20 of them are armed, then you've got a you've got a 20 on one scenario instead of a maybe if they've got one school resource officer, maybe it went from being a one on one to a 20 on one. And I mean, we saw what happened the last time when the school, you know, the thing in Florida but I won't get into that because I'm not going to publicize that anymore that already has been. But, you know, they're, they're giving teachers right now, I heard somewhere that they got little bats. Well, that's not going to do anything. The old saying of the only thing that's going to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And, and that's true. I mean, you, you, we, it's nobody, you know, especially on the more liberal side, wants to discuss that, uh, the fact that, the only thing going to stop these situations once they've started is to take out the threat. Uh, they, they talk about banning guns and that's not going to work. There, there's several videos that go in depth as far as, okay, so you snap your fingers and guns are now magically illegal and it's never going to work. You know, people bring up Australia, well guess what, Australia's still got plenty of guns. And Australia, it didn't work anyway. Um, so I don't think banning guns is going to solve anything. You're banning criminals don't pay attention to laws. They don't care about laws. And if you think banning guns is going to work, there, there's a museum somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but they show all the guns and tools and stuff that were built in prisons by inmates out of, you know, stuff they could sneak, sneak in and plumbing parts. So if you think banning guns is going to fix anything, it's not. Um, but, you know, I think the arming the teachers is a good idea. I think having, you know, they, they have school resource officers and whatever. I, I think maybe, maybe, you know, a lot of the police departments are big enough. Maybe have one or two cops that, you know, are on campus or on the school, you know, on the school grounds, you know, you, you see it all the time, you know, the college campuses have the little security guys that go around in the golf cart. Well, instead of that, make them, make it to uniformed officers or plain clothes officers or whatever that is deemed uh, acceptable, you know, make, make it that the people protecting the place actually have the means to stop a real threat. And that's the biggest, the biggest problem. Like I said, with the baseball, little baseball bats, is I don't get what the point of them is. Uh, I mean, if it, it, it almost, it almost seems like they're making and handing out little security blankets or something. Like, oh, he, here's a little, little bat 
that you can have for protection, but it's not actually going to do anything. You know, and we get into the bigger problem of when you hear the people that don't want the teachers armed, you hear the, oh, well, you know, I don't want someone carrying a gun around my kids and this and that. And it's like, well, if they've received the pop proper training, what makes them any different than a police officer carrying a gun? The other thing is you're already, you're already giving this person your child. You know, that th this, this person is in charge of your child anywhere from six to eight hours. You know, I don't know how long the school days are nowadays, but you know, you're, you're giving, basically relinquishing your child to this person's care. You know, if you're able to say that you trust this person with your child and you trust that their judgment is going to keep your child safe and going to further, more importantly, educate your child, um, you know, what's the difference if they've got a firearm on them? That, that makes no difference. You know, and that's where it, it kind of they don't really have an argument afterwards. They just, you know, it, it comes out that they're anti-firearm and they just don't want guns in general. So I, I definitely, we, we need to do something that's going to give, give the school itself offensive capability against stuff like this. Uh, the other thing is, and I won't go into great detail, but you know, I know a lot of the schools, when situations like this happen, you know, they have the kids huddle in the corner and they lock the door and huddle in the corner and basically just sit there and wait to see what happens. I think that that's terrible, that there was, um, I think it was on Dateline or something, but it was, they did a scenario where they showed, they had, uh, they set up a mock school and then they had a guy, you know, a train, a guy with an airsoft rifle go in and do, he like pretended to go through classroom and classroom. And he did it one run where they were all huddled, you know, with what huddled in the corner and everything. And then he did another run where it was people scattered about and basically mock up of them evacuating the building. And he got, I think, less than a quarter of the casualties when people were scattered around evacuating the building than when he could just go in classroom to classroom and shoot up the place. And I think that's, uh, we, we need to work on actual plans for this. You know, I, I mean, they, you see on the news where people, uh, they, they put up the post, oh, I'm so, I'm so depressed that we had a uh, a school shooting drill today. Well, until we fix the problem, the sad reality of it is, is it's something you have to prepare for. We prepare for fire, we prepare for car accidents, we prepare for everything else. Doesn't necessarily mean we want to experience them, but the fact of the matter is, is it's part of today's life, today's society, and as much as I'd don't want it to be, and I'm sure no one else wants it to be, it's not preparing for it. It's like not preparing for a flood if you're in the floodplain. You know, you can, you can deny it all you want, but when you're huddled on the roof of your uh, house because the first and second floor are flooded, you know, it kind of, kind of bites you in the ass. So I think we need to work on real plans, you know, and work on evacuation con uh, procedures, you know. I mean, if, if someone comes in to shoot up the building and you can evacuate the building in a couple minutes, then instead of having to worry about, you know, people getting shot, you can send the cops right in or the SWAT team right in after the guy. And I think that that's something that needs to be worked on. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about prevention. You know, uh, the Florida guy, and what, like I said, I'm not going to go into it because it doesn't need any more coverage than it already has. But 
that could have been prevented. I, and when I say this, I'm sure someone might get irritated, but I blame society. I blame that particular person. The police had been called on him 30 times. The FBI was aware of him. Uh, the school was aware of him. Uh, the other students, everybody was aware that he had issues and could have really helped Ha been helped by uh, you know some counseling or whatever deemed necessary and the FBI did nothing the police shoved it under the rug and nothing was done and the guy was basically a ticking time bomb you know and we, we need you know no one wants to hear this on the uh, on the liberal side but we need we need better mental health for people you know the fact of the matter is that situation could have been avoided it could have been avoided and he could have gotten the help he needed years before that incident happened and the fact of the matter is that's that's just what it is you know when when, when the police are called 30 times and when the guy goes on um, goes on YouTube and puts a puts a comment or a video or something up saying he wants to be a professional school shooter and I, I did put a video up and I said this I'm like the FBI tried to say that you know oh they couldn't find the guy that I don't I don't take that answer I take the fact that nobody nobody wanted to do anything because nobody wanted to get involved with having to deal with a possible lawsuit or anything like that if you know someone tried to claim that their rights were violated well if you know if, if someone's putting that message out into the world and show, has those signs that they have an issue then we, we need to enact and here's where I also um, want to touch on because when you finally bring up the mental health fact people try and say well we need new laws we need more laws to be able to give the police more power, give the FBI more power. No, they don't. Um, I had this argument with an anti-gunner who sat and told me how, oh, well, you know, we need more laws so that guy in Florida couldn't have gotten a gun. I'm like, if we were to follow current law, if we had done what we, what society was supposed to do, gotten him the help he needed, you know, he would have been flagged as you know, being mentally unstable and not fit to own a firearm, he would have never gotten a gun legally. He might have even gotten the help he needed. But, you know, and this is where, honestly, if I think if people stopped shoving stuff off on other people and actually, you know, especially in government, did their job, I think we'd have a lot less of this. You know, when, when the FBI gets involved and someone's posting comments saying they want to be a professional school shooter, I, I, I don't understand how you don't hear about that till after the fact. You know, I'm not saying it should be broadcasted in the media, but you know, stuff like that could have been prevented. So I think I think prevention is a bigger part of this. I think it's very important that we find a way to protect our schools because even if even if we have the greatest uh, mental health system on the planet, you know, there's still, you know, we live in an unpredictable world. But I think prevention's a huge part of it and I think as far as actually protecting our schools, it's, you know, we, we need to find a way to arm them. We need to find a way to make them hard targets. You know, when the, these people are cowards, they, they go after soft targets, they go after schools where it's a bunch of kids who are defenseless and they know that there's no guns. They, you know, when was the last time you heard of one of these people attacking a police station? You know, there, there's one incidence that I know of where two guys, two, and I say idiots because they were idiots, they were unhappy with the police force and they walked in I guess they thought they were gonna talk sense into the police and they were wearing full-blown ski masks and they were wearing um, you know full body armor and I guess they had I think they had long guns with them 
and the second they walked into the front door of the police station, they had multiple police officers with guns trained on them, and they were put on the ground and handcuffed. And they never fired, no one ever fired around because the second that they met an opposing force greater than them, they stopped. And that's what we need to do with our schools. We need to find a way to make them hard targets, make them, make them safe, make it that they don't, you know, they don't be all you can eat buffets for whether it be someone who's uh, mentally unstable or someone who just is out to do evil intent. So that's my video response. I know it's kind of rambling. I know it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, almost 16 minutes long, but uh, that that's what I think we should do. Uh, have a good night.